Hello, guys. Once again, I welcome you to my show, the stock, uh, the stock analysis simplified. Um, remember, this show is for everybody who want to invest in stock for the long term, uh, who want to make money in stock for the long term. When I say long term, I don't mean forever. Okay. So what I mean with that, by that is you buy the stock, you hold it for two years or for five years, depending on your goal. Uh, then when you appreciate well, during that time, you sell it and make money. I always said it. Stock investing is not a get rich quick business unless you have some kind of information that nobody knows. But um, if it's under the efficient market hypothesis theory, uh, those information that you think you have that nobody knows is immediately priced then in into the market. So at the end of the day, everybody knows about it. So no, you cannot uh, really take advantage of it um, in a few matter of seconds or days, uh, unless you have inside information. That is, unless you are doing insider trading, which is illegal. If it, if it can be proved that you're getting some material information from somebody, in, an insider, you can go to jail for that. So the best, your best bet is to create your own inside information by doing some kind of fundamental analysis, which is, which is what I'm doing here for you, and then buying and holding. Now, those that buy stock to then sell it tomorrow or buy this week and sell it next week, well, they make uh, most of them make that decision based only on the uh, direction of the um, chart. Story. They call them chartists. They do technical analysis. Well, sometimes they gain. Maybe they gain this week. Next week they lose. The following week they gain. So at the end of the day, yeah, if you check all your gains and losses, you see that you really gain a little bit, you know, and then plus if you add a transaction cost that you pay for each trade, then on top of that, the IRS will come for your head. IRS is the Acronym for the Internal Revenue Service, come for your head for taxes. So you see that it doesn't worth it. But if you buy, do your analysis, make a decision of to buy or not to buy of the company. But if your decision analysis tells you to buy it and hold it and you hold it, well, you're not you're paying only one, one, two transaction costs. The one you pay when you bought it, and the one you pay when you sell the stock. Two years for to, from that from the, uh, two years later or five years later, and IRS will not discover you until you sell the stock two years later, excuse me, or five years later, and they pass you only on the capital gain. So you can it, you can see why um, by uh, doing the uh, buy and hold strategy for the long term is always uh, the best, unless okay, like I said, unless you have some, some information that nobody knows about that will cause the market to moved in your favor that's the only way buy today and sell next week can work for you anyway I, i'm sure you get the point my name is joseph ejikoji and once again welcome to my show stock analysis simplified and today the company of our interest is microsoft microsoft now um so let's see if we can make money uh, by buying Microsoft stock. As you already know, um, let me make sure you're seeing this. Okay. As you already know, Microsoft Corporation uh, is a global, global provider of software services. Uh, they also um, provide devices like uh, Office, uh, well, software especially. Then, of course, uh, so, uh, the hardware part of it. Now, uh, so... Microsoft provide them um, in, I would say in plain terms, software services, devices, and solution, things like um, the Office Suite, Microsoft Team, LinkedIn, uh, Dynamics 365, then Windows operating system, and many more, many more. So this company was founded in 1975. 
And of course, as we all know, they are they are based in Washington, uh, Redmond, Washington State. Now, um, let us see if we can make money for Microsoft. Remember, my goal for this show is to show you how you can get rich from stocks. And when we have time, I will do more, do some on bonds, like uh, you know, treasury bonds. But now, for now, let us focus on stocks. Now, my analysis of Microsoft Corporation stock will be based on three things, as usual. I will, well, not three things that I've extracted from three areas are uh, the company's balance sheets, the company income statement and cash flow statements, and the company's stock information. Now, let us see if we can, um, if we, Microsoft is good enough for us, okay? Now, I will take you to where we can get this information, which uh, is from Yahoo Finance. Why Yahoo Finance? Because at Yahoo Finance, this information we are provided free of charge for us. Um, so let us start uh, by putting the trading symbol Microsoft. As you can see from here, the trading symbol is MSFT. So we go to the Yahoo Finance and put MSFT. MSFT. See if it pull out Microsoft. MSFT. I can see that Microsoft Corporation is now popped up. I'm going to click on it. Okay, let's begin our analysis. So the first thing I always do is to go to the um, chart. Now, we're in this chart, I'm not looking for... Uh, see, they have different data range. You have one day, five days, one month, three months, six months, year to day, one year, two year, five years. Now, I'm not looking at one day, five day, one month, three months, because I'm, like I say, this is for a long-term investment by a whole strategy. So we're looking at only the two years and five years. Look at the two years now and see, as usual, the stock is going up and down, which is the, uh, the erratic movement of stocks, okay? So to get to make sense of it, I'm gonna make it um put um a 200 day moving average on it, okay? So I'm gonna add an indicator. Let me make sure you're seeing this. See what the indicator tell us. So yeah, since we are, we are, we are buying long-term uh, purchase and it's a buy and, a buy and hold strategy, we're gonna use the 200 a day moving average. So I'm gonna click on the in this indicator symbol so choose a moving average. I'm gonna change this to 200, okay? Okay. So as you can see here, well, 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 Microsoft were, Microsoft have been trading consistently above the moving average. You can see the moving average right here. This line that is currently is trending up. See? Now, um, when the stock is trading, uh, this is the moving average, and this is the Microsoft movement of Microsoft stock, which is trading above, above the moving average with a good sign. Um, so let's look at the five-year moving average. See, see, it's still trending, and if you see the moving average is trending up, and the stock of Microsoft is trending above that, which is which is um, but the good one is stock, uh, trade above. Uh, moving average is a bullish symbols. I mean, it's so that it is um the value will go up. It's in the you know, uh, in the short term and both in the short term and long term because it's significantly above. What does that tell us? So it uh because the Microsoft stock is trading above its two hundred day moving average. Uh, like I said, it is a positive um. Like I say, it's a positive sign. It's a, it's a bullish signal showing that the stock the value will, will appreciate. So between 2019 to 2023 and beyond, it shows an upward trend. Okay? Uh, what does this upward trend mean? It means that um, the stock, you know, have a... um. 
basically, simply put, put in this way, uh, when a stock is trading above the 200 day moving average, it indicates a strong long term uptrend in the stock price, which is what you are looking for as an investor. To the up what I mean that the value, the price will go up, and um, uh, that means you're gonna make some capital gain. So, um, now remember, it is important for investors to consider this in conjunction with other factors and indicators to make a well-rounded rounded investment decision. So that's why we need to do more, uh, more work on this. We cannot rely only on the, the moving average. Okay, so that for that reason, we go back, and you can see that Microsoft stock is three hundred sixty seventy four dollars seven cent per share. It's down today, but this is just part of the normal fluctuation of stocks. Now let's look at the other uh, in uh, other uh, metrics we'll be using for this uh, analyzing this this company. Let's look at the statistics. I will begin with the. Uh, profitability analysis. Remember, this is for, for the year 2023. Uh, actually, for this one, we have uh, 2029, 2023 to, uh, to uh, well, June to September. So that means that they, uh, their physical year ends in June and then begins. Yeah. So the, this is for the most recent quarter we have. Now, you can see that under the management effectiveness, you can, uh, sorry, under um, profitability, we see that the profit margin for Microsoft is 35.31%. Well, now, and then we also have the operating margin of 47.59%. So this figure suggests that uh, the company has a strong capacity to convert revenue into profit. So, and this underlying operational efficiency and the effective cost management, you know, for this company. Now, uh, under management effectiveness, we're looking at um, return on asset and return on equity. The return, the, uh, the return on assets stands at 14.57%, which indicates that Microsoft, you know, the company, uh, it, 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 it indicates the... Um, efficient use, use of assets in generating earnings. Now, similarly, the return on equity of that 9.11% reflect exceptional equity management, uh, showcasing uh, the company's ability to generate profit from shareholders' investment. Now, at this point, we are ready to look at the income statements for Microsoft. On that revenue, we have uh, two... 218.31 billion. And uh, it has a per share, per share revenue per share of $29.35. So that is revenue for per share. So the company's year on year quarterly revenue is 12.80%. See, quarterly revenue year on year, 12.80%, which demonstrates consistent growth in the market. Then the net income available to common shareholders is 77. You can see the net income available to common shareholders is 77.1 billion. Net income is a fancy name for net profit. See? So, and the diluted earning per share is 10.30. I mean, $10 after 4 cents, which indicates these two things indicate, you know, um, strong profitability. The net income of 7.1 billion and the little earning per share of $10.30. The two of them indicate strong profitability. So uh, the Microsoft quarterly earnings have really grown by 27%. You can see from here, quarterly earnings growth is 27%, which is good. Uh, you know, compared to the previous year. Now, um, having explained this, we can now take a look at the uh, balance sheet. We have a total cash of 143. For nine billion with cash per, cash per share of see cash per share of nineteen point seven thirty seven, which this suggests uh, significant liquidity. Now we have that the company has the total debt. see total debt of one hundred five point six eight billion, resulting from the 
resulting in a debt to equity ratio, debt to equity ratio of 47.88%. So the current ratio is good as well. You can see the current ratio as 1.66, uh, which indicates uh, that for, a, for each dollar, uh, for each dollar uh, that uh, Microsoft has, for, we, for each one dollar they have of debt, they have each one dollar of debt, they have to have one point six one dollar sixty six cents to cover it. That means they can they are in a good position. So you let add that Microsoft has one billion dollar in debt. You mean that they have one point one bit one billion six hundred million. I mean they have one point six billion to take care of it. They, they can meet their day to day um uh you know the current and I will say I will call it um this day to day they can take care of their short term debt. That's the best way to put it. Okay. Now, so one point six six indicate that the company is can comfortably meet its short term liabilities with these uh short term assets. Now, um, we can now move to the cash flow statement. According to the cash flow statement, I can see that the operating cash flow of 94.97 billion hi highlights strong operational um efficiency and the company's uh, deliver company's legal free cash flow level free cash flow of 50.42 billion for that you know in the underlines microsoft uh, financial health and its ability to invest in growth opportunities after servicing its debts so uh, from from all these things, you can see that uh, the analysis of this, you know, all this uh, statement, all this analysis we did here, both the financial statement ratio and um, um the uh, moving average, this paints a picture. They paint a picture of um a financially robust company with strong profitability, effective management and solid growth prospects. So, and also the, the Microsoft ability to generate significant income and manage its assets and equity effectively make it a potentially attractive uh, option for investors. So, um, I mean, it's all, this, this is the case where we say that too much of a good thing is still a good thing. <laughs> too much of a good thing is still a good thing. So. That is the case where like I, I, I am seeing in, in um, Microsoft. So what will our decision be? That's the decision time. Based on what we have covered so far, Microsoft, I will say that um, for the Microsoft stock, let me make sure you are seeing this. Okay. The Microsoft stock, the answer is a yes, big yes, buy this. Stock. So answer is buy. Buy. B U I. Buy Microsoft stock and keep it uh, for two to five years before you sell. Okay. Yeah? So that's our final message is a buy. Okay. Yeah? Thank you for listening to my um, stock investing simplified show. And I'm going to see you in my next uh, lecture where I will uh, analyze another company for you. I hope you are getting, uh, having a good time with this. Remember, uh, don't forget my goal. My goal is to make you rich. Thank you. Bye-bye.